A lot of it depends on the severity of the vein occlusion. It also depends on how long they've had the macular edema. And that's why, you know, there are different ways of treating the disease. There's one way which is a re reactionary or treat them as needed. Uh, there's another way which is more proactive, which says, look, we don't want the macular edema to come back. Because when it comes back, there are times we can get the vision back, but there are times we can't. And so we kind of want to prevent that inflammation or that cystoid macular edema from forming. And that's why we take a more proactive approach with a treat and extend approach. I think, you know, regarding vision loss, whether it's severe or irreversible, a lot of it depends on the initial occlusion itself and the duration of the macular edema. And so the goal is always to not have any edema there. That's what we want to. And then our, you know, it's kind of balancing, you know, balancing the burdens for the patient, how often they have to come in while, you know, maintaining uh, a situation where there's no swelling on the retina. It's obviously, this is very specialized care, and anyone who does these injections and manages these condi conditions, we want people to be qualified for it. Now, in some areas, there are lots of retina specialists. In some areas, there are not. And unfortunately, areas where there's not a lot of retina specialists, other physicians have kind of tried to fill in the gaps. And it's hard for me to comment on what's really the ideal situation. I mean, all I can tell you is I think, you know, if I was getting treated by someone, I'd want someone who's qualified for it. And if I was in an area where there, that person was not there, then I think you got to go to someone where there is. I don't think you want to take a shortcut or say, you know what, there's no one in this area, I'm just going to see someone else. I think vision is one of the most precious senses we have and it would be a priority to really go to the person who is adequately trained and comfortable in managing this condition. Definitely, definitely. And a lot of it depends on, you know, there's some doctors who feel very comfortable treating it and have a lot of experience. There's some that do, do not. And a lot of it varies on the individual physician. Um, you know, in where we practice, we do have, there are, we're in a very, you know, an urban area. And so we do have a lot of ophthalmologists who are very, you know, skilled on making the diagnosis. But when it comes to treatment and managing it, they often refer to us. Uh, and so I think many doctors can make the diagnosis. And I think it's very important to get those patients referred in as soon as possible to the specialist to begin treatment because we do know that the longer you wait, um, the outcomes are not as good. I think it's how you, how you look at it. You know, I think, you know, before we had these intravitreal anti-VEGF agents and corticosteroids, people went blind. People lost their eyes. I mean, this was a devastating condition. So the fact now that we're in a situation where we're more arguing, well, I'm, am I getting too many injections? You know, we have a treatment that works. Now, whether we want to use it or not is there. Obviously, I think we would all love a cure versus a, you know, a chronic treatment. But until we get a cure, this is a pretty effective therapy. And so, um, you know, I understand patients' frustration. No one wants to get these injections, trust me. But at the same time, as I mentioned before, losing your vision is a lot worse. And, you know, we're very fortunate we live in a time where we have effective therapies and patients can be very functional, live their lives. It does, you know, it is, tough to come in regularly, but at the same time, going blind is a lot worse. Uh, and hopefully this will buy us time until we can find treatments that last even longer, or even treat treatments that are more curative in nature. The future of the field is very exciting. Obviously, we have three anti-VEGF agents. We have multiple cortical steroids. So, and a lot more work is looking at different other agents that may have may last longer. Uh, there's a lot of excitement in drug delivery. So instead of getting these frequent intravitreal injections, there may be some devices where medicines last for six months or 12 months. And that, you know, will definitely help with compliance and making sure patients get their treatments. And you know, I think with all this research and emphasis being put in this area, hopefully we'll learn more information about providing cures. Uh, as well. And so I think the future is very bright and we're very fortunate to be practicing in this era and our hope is with all the work being done now with all the exciting clinical trials we'll continue to add to our armamentarium in managing this devastating condition.